In this video, I'll describe parasitic oscillations in a receiver's local oscillator, the effect they can have on reception, and how you could cure them. Here's the 7 MHz CW receiver described in a recent video, but tidied up. The 11 MHz VXO is here. This is the rest of the receiver, and this section is reserved for a future transmitter. Because it has such a good receiver, this has the making of a DX grade QRP CW transceiver. But before we can do that, we must fix one major problem. Let's have a turn around during the CQ Worldwide contest and see if you can pick up what the problem is. You might have noticed that when tuning across the band before, you heard a few birdies, which in some cases interfered with the received signal. I've removed the antenna connection, so they're now more obvious. This is about the strongest. And there are some smaller ones that are very unstable. You'll notice a dramatically different change in frequency. Whereas if we were to do that same thing on a desired signal, moving a finger near its coil in series with the crystal and the variable capacitor hardly changes the desired signal, which is as it should be. But there's some nasty parasitic oscillation. That explains why the parasitic oscillations are also different when I've got the lid on versus when I've got it off. Tuning across, not only did you hear the desired signals, but other signals as well. Removing the antenna connection resulted in the DX stations not being heard, but these other signals still being audible. In fact, even louder than before because there is no background noise. Therefore, they must be generated internally within the receiver. What was happening is that this 11 MHz local oscillator was doing more than just oscillating on 11 MHz. It was oscillating on other frequencies as well, possibly higher. Putting your finger next to the VXO made the parasitic oscillations appear and go away, even though moving the finger had little effect on the desired signal and the main frequency coming from the local oscillator. Parasitics are common problems in wide string VXOs. When you build a VXO, you start by just having the series capacitor. You might only get two or three kilohertz shift. Then you put in an inductor. That might give you five kilohertz. You add some in series and your tuning range increases. The wider you make a VXO swing, in this case, you're moving it by more than 20 kHz on 11 MHz, the more prone a VXO can be to self-oscillation. To fix it, you need to dampen down the coils used in series with a variable capacitor and the crystal. Something like a resistor across them should help. This is a circuit of the Super VXO with the anti-parasitic resistors added. 68K in both cases. Values that are too high will have no effect and you'll still get the spurious parasitic oscillations, while values too low may affect the VXO's tuning range. I was able to maintain the original tuning range and eliminate the parasitics with the values you see here. Now, when I tune across the whole frequency range, there are no birdies.
In this video, we've described parasitic oscillations, an underappreciated problem that can mar the performance of VFOs, and therefore receivers and transmitters. It's a problem sometimes difficult to track down, but sometimes even a finger can help diagnosis. The cure though was extremely cheap. Just two resistors across the VXO's inductors was able to tame the oscillator and ensure a clean output. The receiver is now a genuine pleasure to use and a transmitter section can now be contemplated. Just a reminder that if you're looking for a comprehensive operating manual on all aspects of low power amateur radio, don't go past minimum QRP. Available from Amazon for under US $5. For more information, go to vk3ye.com and follow the link or go to Amazon and type in minimum QRP.